My name is Frank Lacana. I'm a beekeeper. I've been a beekeeper for about 14 years. Amateur honey producer and a beekeeping supply manager. Prior to about the 1860s, bees were kept in boxes where they had to actually destroy the comb to harvest the honey. And in the mid 1860s, a minister from Philadelphia, a Reverend uh, Lorenzo Lorraine Langstroth, invented what's called the Langstroth hive with removable frames where we could harvest the honey from the hive without killing the bees. And to this day, that is the hive that we use, beekeepers use. People think that bees mean honey, and to be honest with you, honey bees are mainly kept in this country for pollination. One third of every, every bit of food we eat comes directly or indirectly from honey bees. The honey is just a, a side product really, but hobbyist beekeepers like myself and others, we don't really do a lot of pollination. We raise the bees to get honey and we harvest the honey and sell the honey. In northeastern Pennsylvania, we have a, a vast array of plants that provide the bees with food. They get both pollen and nectar from the plants. We've got trees such as the sugar maples in the springtime, the pussy willows that provide pollen, we've got uh, basswood, we've got black locust, we've got tulip poplar. People don't think trees and honey, but trees produce a lot of honey for us. And then the plants, we've got things like the wild rocket mustard, the blackberries, the raspberries, then we've got goldenrod, we've got Japanese knotweed, which is an invasive here, but it, it makes great honey. And in the fall, we've got the asters. As a beekeeper, our goal is to, to get some honey and to give the bees enough room to raise their brood. We actually split the honey. We let them keep their half and we take the other half. The way we do that is we designate two, the two bottom boxes of, of the hive for the bees and the queen to lay her eggs and raise her brood. And the top boxes are our surplus honey. The bees need about 60 to 100 pounds of honey to get through the winter here. The queen will continue to lay brood all through the year taking a short break in late December, early January, but she'll continually lay brood. People wonder what happens to bees in the winter time. Well, in that hive, in the winter, they will cluster into a very tight ball and they'll vibrate their wings to generate heat to keep warm inside that ball. If you were to take a thermometer and put it into the middle of that, that cluster of bees, it would, no matter what the outside temperature was, it would read about 95 degrees because that's the temperature they need to raise brood in there all year long and they're so cold on the outside they can't move that every once in a while one of their sisters will move out and they'll push their sister in so she can warm up and get some honey to eat and start vibrating her wings. Up a hive like this may be made up of 60 to 80 thousand bees. They actually function as an organism instead of single insect. Taking bee stings is part of the job. Uh, the, the more gentle you are with the bees and if you use your smoker you get used to getting stung and it doesn't hurt that much. Yeah, the bee population has been crashing lately and we think it's due to, we're not sure, but we think it's due to a multitude of, of things. Pesticides being one and it seems to be disorienting them so when they leave their hive they can't find their way back. Normally a honeybee will only go to its own hive and it'll fly three miles in any direction and it'll always come back to its hive. This pesticide we think is doing something to disorient that because they just disappear and they die. They're also suffering from a mite that was brought into this country in, in the late 80s it's called varroa. It's a it, on a human being. It would be like us having a tick this big on us. It's very important to plant flowers and, and vegetables around to give the bees something to eat. What you want to do is you want to plant a diversity of plants in your garden. We have these huge monoculture crops out there that it's like us. You know, we might like a steak but you wouldn't want to eat steak for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. It's the same thing with the bees. They don't want almond pollen every single day. Okay, we're going to start the smoker, and you can see what I'm using. I'm using the sumac, staghorn sumac bobs, I call them. They make great smoker fuel. They give off a nice, cool smoke because we want to smoke the bees, but we, do not want to, we don't want to burn the bees. So I'm just going to give them a puff here to let them know I'm coming. And then I'll puff under this cover here. You can see the bees are down on these frames. This is a honey frame I have in here. So they haven't started filling this yet because the honey flow, the fall flow has not started. But they'll fill all of this with honey and they'll cap it up. They drew this wax out. This is beeswax. They made all these cells. And so they're going to be busy in a couple weeks making honey. 
they glue everything together with what's called propolis and that it's a natural uh, antifungal antibacterial agent that they gather from the resins of plants and trees or, or around the area they bring it back to the hive and they coat things in the hive and they seal up cracks with it to keep the hive disease free as much as they can most people that buy honey in a store think that it's honey it is not honey real honey has never been heated above 100 degrees 110 degrees and it's never been filtered what they tend to do in the store to keep it clear and, and from crystallizing they they pasteurize it to kill all the wild yeasts which it does and it kills everything good in honey and then they use force and push it through a really fine filter to remove all the particles like pollen which is very which is what's good for you in honey by the time they're done processing it it's nothing but a sugar and it has no health benefits for you so when as you can see right here is capped honey so if you do this you'll see there's capped honey right there so if you were to taste that that'd be the sweetest stuff you've ever tasted in your life